Hello, I'm Ming Laba. I am Henry Zin. Welcome to Myanmar Today, and this is where we take a look at what's happening in Myanmar. Today, we have reports from our reporters Thora Suizin on citizens' celebration of the birthday of State Councillor Taon San Suu Kyi. Loom got the story on Kubota diesel engine in Myanmar. Williamson will give us a detailed report on digital and mobile cultures in Myanmar. And last but not least, David Tanner has the story on Microsoft hosting Myanmar tech professionals for open source on Azure Day. Before we get to the reports, let's have a quick look at the latest local news from around Myanmar. President Wu Min and First Lady Do Cho Cho attended the celebration of State Councillor Da Aung San Suu Kyi's 74th birthday held in the Lutto Hall in Nebido on Wednesday. Other important figures attended the event celebration as well. Attendees cordially welcomed the state councillor as she arrived at the Luto Hall and extended their wishes to her on her birthday. The state councillor delivered an opening greeting, then hosted a luncheon for the guests and released duffs as an act of charity on her 74th birthday. Afterwards, the state councillor visited her birthday commemorations held at the President's Office, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Office of the State Councillor and Ministry of Office of the Union Government. Commander-in-Chief of Defence Services, Senior General Mei Online and wife Do Ji La visited a drinking water supply facility donated by the Central Command and Midda Yezin Rural Area Water Supply Society and donors in Ngathayao Nyao Township, Mandalay Region on Wednesday. Following the visit, the senior general met with local people in Ngatayao and briefed them about regional development. Speaking at the meeting, senior general Mei Online stressed the importance of producing local products meeting required quality standards and supplying the goods with modern packaging in attempts to get access to local and foreign markets. The fifth steering committee meeting for the Myanmar Denmark program on rule of law and human rights was held on Wednesday at the office of the Union Attorney General in Nebido. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss the bilateral cooperation in implementing the tasks of the Strategic Plan 2019-2023 of Justice for Public of the Rule of Law Centres and Justice Sector Coordinating Body. The programme on the rule of law and human rights has been implemented under the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the Office of the Union Attorney General and the Denmark Embassy in 2017. And that's all with the local news. You're still with me on MI Radio's Myanmar Today, and I believe it's time now to take a look at our first report. State Councillor Don San Suu Kyi's 74th birthday fell on Wednesday, and the citizens around Myanmar were celebrating her birthday. Among the birthday celebrations happening around the country, Thora Suizin has the report on the event called From Citizens to Citizens, which took place at Mahabandula Park in Yangon. Citizens in Yangon celebrated for the 74th birthday of State Councillor of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, Dong Aung San Suu Kyi, who was born on 19 June 1945. She is the daughter of General Aung San, who is the father of independence of Myanmar, and Do Kim Ji. Dong Aung San Suu Kyi declared herself as an activist in the movement of democracy in August 1988. She was kept under house arrest for many years, from which she released in 2010. Her party, the National League for Democracy, has gained the victory in 2015 election and she was set for the position of state councillor. The citizens around Myanmar are honoring and celebrating for her 74th birthday, which falls on 19 June. As one of the celebrations, the event called From Citizens to Citizens was taken place at Mahabandula Park. One of the organizers of the event, Wu Dansin, said, We have him celebrating the Onsan Suu Kyi's birthday under the title From Citizens to Citizens for four years now. We gather different organizations and citizens to celebrate her birthday. We are not presenting any political parties, but as the citizens, who support our leader to Aung San Suu Kyi.
The event includes praying birthday wishes, reciting poems, blessing for the Wangsan Suji, and donating food for the people. After claiming herself as a politician, she presented the citizens in the movement of democracy for over 30 years. We trust her actions and her words as a citizen, so we will keep following her leadership. We are wishing her to long live. One of the poems they recited at the event means that with her eyes full of hope, she gives a hand comforting us. She stands around the world wearing the flowers called love. She gives of her life. What will we give for her in back? Do Omajo wished for Do Aung San Suu Kyi that. Me Suu Kyi Ma Zee Jin Hai, Me Suu Kyi Ma Ata Shee Ma Le, Di Democracy Kri Na Aung Mi Ma Pya Tere. I wish our mother Suu to be healthy and live longer so that our democracy journal will be successful. Although I cannot do very much, I am playing my role as a citizen to support her leadership as we believe her. The citizens together with the Aung San Suu Kyi are eager to establish the country of democracy. Despite many obstacles, the citizens are always supporting the leader the Aung San Suu Kyi to claim the victory of changes happening in Myanmar. That's all for now. This is your reporter Dora Suzy from MI Radio. That's a report on citizens' celebration of the birthday of State Councillor the Aung San Suu Kyi. We'll be taking a look at the stocks and currency exchange rates in Yangon in a while, but let's check on weather updates now in the three major cities in Myanmar. In Yangon, 30 degrees Celsius, mostly cloudy, a couple of showers and thunderstorms, but it feels like 36 degrees Celsius. Highest temperature is expected to be 30 degrees Celsius, but we're looking at the lowest temperature of 25. 43% chance of rain is expected. In Nebido, 32 degrees Celsius and mostly cloudy, a shower or thunderstorm around but it feels like 35 degrees Celsius. Highest temperature is expected to be 32 degrees Celsius and we're looking at the lowest temperature of 24. 51% chance of rain is expected. In Manali, 34 degrees Celsius and mostly cloudy but it feels like 38 degrees Celsius. Highest temperature is expected to be 35 and we're looking at the lowest temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. 20% chance of rain is expected. And that's the weather updates here in Myanmar. Before we move on to stocks and currency exchange rates, let's take a look at the second report for today. According to Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the agriculture sector contributes to 37.8% of gross domestic product, accounts for 25 to 30% of total export earnings and employees 70% of the labor force. Meanwhile, for farmers to be able to produce good products, machinery supplies are very important. Thus, Myanmar was introduced one of the diesel engines called Kubota ZT, Loom reports. Hi, this is your messenger Loom, greeting from MI Radio. Now I've got a story about Kubota diesel engine in Myanmar. Agriculture in Myanmar used to be named as the rice bowl of Asia. Myanmar has a large supply of land and water to do agribusiness and agriculture plays a vital role in society of Myanmar which provides employment to the people. In the past, farmers in Myanmar had limited access to the missionaries of farming. However, the farmer now in Myanmar has got multiple options for choosing the products. One of the diesel engines in Myanmar, called Kubota Diesel Engine ZT, has been introduced to Myanmar since 2015, the time when Kubota Myanmar entered Myanmar. It sells tractors, combined harvester, 
rice transplanter, power trailers, diesel engines, and construction machineries. Mr. Numtanu, Senior Sales and Marketing, Executive of CM Kubota, explain more about Kubota here in Myanmar. My name is Nantanat Lim Gamrung. I am the Senior Sales Executive from CM Kubota Company, who take care of like, Myanmar market for this product, diesel engine and power tiller. For first, we talk about diesel engine, this one. This one, we, we have like a 7X X, X model starting from X horsepower to 15.5 horsepower yes and uh, for our product I mean we don't sell only the product but we provide after sales service as well because if you look at in the market our price our product price is a bit high if, com if compared with other brands uh, th that's, that is because we, we, we not sell we not selling only the product but we provide the thing that can help Myanmar farmer have like a better life. We, we have like an after sale so we good spare part. That's just why our price, uh, if compared with other, is a bit high. Mr. Noom Tanu explained that their product's price will be higher than other brands in Myanmar, but he said the quality would be better. Kubota has been in Myanmar for almost 10 years now. Mr. Noom Tanu said, the farmers from Myanmar understand more about Kubota nowadays. Ten years ago, maybe farmers knew only Chinese production of diesel engine. However, they are getting to know more about Kubota now. We, 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 we start to penetrate to Myanmar market since like our, maybe almost ten years. We, we just introduced the, the, the good quality product to the Myanmar farmer. I think nowadays, Myanmar farmer they, they, they understand more about about our product because maybe ten years ago they, they know only maybe uh, Chinese production is diesel engine but right now many Myanmar farmer they know Kubota already. I think in the in the near future we can increase ourselves a lot. In ASEAN countries, Kubota stands number one in the sale of Kubota products. In Myanmar, the market of Kubota is just penetrating and the market of it is still growing. For Cambodia and Laos, Kubota has been existing for more than 20 years. When it comes to Myanmar, the market share could be only 10% compared to other ASEAN countries. Mr. Noom Tanu further explained some of the challenges that Kubota has faced when entering Myanmar market. Uh, uh, first, uh, the, the thing that I, I, I feel I can touch with Myanmar farmer right now they, 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 they need the good one, the good product. Maybe at uh, 10 years ago they just like uh, the cheaper the cheapest the cheapest one they can afford they can, they can, pay, they can, they can buy. but right now they, know, they, know, they have like uh, experience already. they want the good product. If compared with last year, for our target, it's at least 20% more than last year for our sale. 20, 20. Compared to last year market revenue, Kubota expected that more than 20% of sale growth would occur this year 2019. Heavy missionary manufacturer Kubota Corporation has opened an import and sales facility in Myanmar since 2015. Alright, that's all about Kubota here in Myanmar and goodbye until next story, I am yours, Lu. That's a report on Kubota diesel engine in Myanmar. Alright, let's now check on the currency rates from Myanmar's central bank. One US dollar is at 1,527 chats, one Chinese RMB is at 221 chats, one euro is at 1,711 chats, one pound sterling is at 1,920 chats, one Singapore dollar is at 1,116 chats, one Malaysian ringgit is at 365 chats, one Thai baht is at 48 chats, and the Indian rupee is at 21 chats. Gold is trading at $1,379. Silver is at $15, and Brent crude oil is at $54. On the Yangon Stock Exchange, FMI is at $11,500. MTSH is at $3,300. MCB is at $7,900. FPB is at $24,000. TMH is at $3,000. And that's all on currency rates and Yangon Stock Exchange for today. 
This is Myanmar Today, broadcasting live from Myanmar International Radio. You can visit our website at miradio.com.mm and listen to our radio programs live on the website. Great music, great shows, keeping you entertained. And if you're on FM, catch us on 96.1 FM in Yangon, 96.5 in Mandalay and 96.7 in Nibido. Or better yet, download MI Radio app on both iOS and Android devices so MI Radio is with you wherever you go. Moving on to third report. With the rise in the number of smartphones and telecommunication operations in Myanmar, lifestyles of the people in Myanmar has changed, especially the way people communicate with each other. Therefore, social media also plays a big role in day-to-day -day life of the people in Myanmar. Facebook is the most popular social media platform, which usage is higher than the usage of Google in Myanmar. The research on digital and mobile cultures was conducted by a group of young researchers from Pandia and the presentation on the research was held on Tuesday at Pandia in Yangon. The research focused on how people use social media and how educated they are regarding digital devices they use. Willinson reports. Emergence of telecommunication revolution in the year 2014 in Myanmar, the usage of smartphone and internet have been growing rapidly since then. Therefore, the coming of telecommunication has completely changed the lifestyle of the people in Myanmar and social media has shaped the way the people communicate each other and the people have become more self-centered than being socially involved. In Myanmar, Facebook is the leading social media platform which has a growing number of users and it is used to communicate each other and other purposes like business and vlogging. A recent research by Go Tan Zin who conducted a research delivered his findings on digital cultures in Myanmar on 18 of June 2019 at Pandiya in Yangon. The research was conducted to find out how deeply social media is rooted in daily life of the people in Myanmar and how educated the people about digital devices they use. Between October 2018 and March 2019, Pandiyao's Tech for Peace team conducted 23 focus groups with 137 participants on six locations including Kaindaya, Yangon, Mechila, Taungji, Gle, and Pa'an. The report will also serve as the basis for further external communication and publications which the team hopes will help the civic tech sector, civil society organization and donors better understanding digital culture in Myanmar and its implications for policy and programming. According to the research conducted by Pandiya, the, the popularity of an if solely depends on its utility, how data economical it is. While Facebook and Messenger are without a doubt the most popular, YouTube, TikTok and various video downloaders and Zapier are also commonly in use. Apart from making call, entertainment is also the reason most people acquire smartphones. Videos are the most popular content type. Given the larger file size of audiovisual files, users develop their own ways of minimizing data cost. Speaking to media, let's hear from Ko Tan Sin, the one who conducted a research work on digital culture in Myanmar. When it comes to digital skills, many people think that digital skills are meant to be for men, nothing to do with women. Many females users are not familiar with opening social account or changing the setting of a smartphone. The reason for slow digital learning skills for women is that they are hindered to acquire the skills socially and culturally, especially it is more difficult for those who live in remote areas. And the girls need to equip themselves to protect and prevent themselves from cyber bullying or cyber attack. But we need to spread the awareness and give a workshop to every user of social media for self-protection. Then only all the users can use social media for self-improvement. <laughs> 
all those smartphones are seen as a distraction for high school students, for young adults and university students, smartphones are an essential aid for self-improvement. Most new users come online after they pass 11th grade or matriculation. There is more to social networking on smartphone. Facebook helps small businesses, professionals, and civil society in their networking and communication. For many in Myanmar, Facebook is an all-rounder platform which is used more often than Google. Myanmar mobile users find the information that they need on Facebook rather than Google. People use Facebook as the internet because it is more responsive to search and thus offers a better quality content. Social networking is secondary. Now let's once again hear from Ko Tansit what he has to say about social media users in Myanmar. <laughs> According to the research we conducted, we found out that most of the Facebook users in Myanmar are males. Overall ratio of Facebook users in Myanmar is 65% of the users are male and the remaining 35% are female users. But this is not the exact data. Some females fear that they might get bullied on social media, so they use social media as male users. But one thing sure is that male users are more in number than female users. The reason for lower female users is that many of them fear of cyberbullying. Even though participants are increasingly aware of prevalence of negativity and misleading content on Facebook, they have developed their own ways of curating their experience. The participants put a lot of trust in some of the channels and pages related to their different topics of interest. Young adults learn through readings and watching on smartphones for self-improvement. This is Williamson reporting for MI Radio. That's the report on digital and mobile cultures in Myanmar. Well, don't go anywhere just yet because we still got one last report for you from David Tanner. On Tuesday at Pullman Centerpoint Hotel, Microsoft hosted over 100 IT professionals for open source Azure Day to educate and inspire Myanmar companies on how Microsoft Azure can help power the next generation of distributed computing, no matter their operating system preferences. David Henner has the details. Azure is Microsoft's open, flexible, enterprise-grade cloud computing platform. Companies around the world rely on Azure to host their enterprise computing systems. In some cases, using Azure replaces the need to have expensive on-site servers and storages. With that being said, let's hear out the detail of the event from Commercial Cloud Marketing and Operations of SEA New Markets from Microsoft, Mr. Sanjay Statish. Hi, uh, my name is Sanjay Satish. I'm a business group lead for cloud and AI covering Microsoft Southeast Asia emerging markets, out of which Myanmar is a focus country as well. So, so today we're talking about specifically about Linux on Azure. So we're talking about our open source uh, platform uh, capabilities that can be provided by our Microsoft Cloud Platform Azure. So yeah. Sure. So yeah, so we um, believe strongly in partnerships. So we are a platform company at the core. So our fundamental ideology is that whatever you're comfortable you are using today, whether that's a uh, programming language like Java or Python, or if it's a database technology or a DevOps technology like Docker or Kubernetes, you can use that uh, existing skill set of yours to come and build up on, on the Azure platform to really use the power of the cloud. Azure is flexible enough to host many of the automated computing tasks required by companies around the world. And simple per minute pricing means users can plan their spend and scaling up and down as their needs change. Sure. So Azure, think of Azure as basically a set of remote servers located in a nearest data center of your of the customer's your choice, right? So um, Azure is basically a, a computer over the internet. So you basically can start building out your applications and services uh, with Azure. Businesses of any size can do that today. Okay, so sure. So um, so Azure um, has the benefit of being part of Microsoft technologies, right? So we have three clouds today: Office 365, Dynamics 365, and Azure. No other cloud vendor can provide that integration across the different clouds. Solution that that does the key differentiator. Plus, uh, as I shared in my presentation, we are the most trusted cloud out there with the most number of certifications. So I think that differentiates us from the uh, from the competition.
competition. Yeah, yeah. So we take security very, very seriously in Microsoft. Every year we invest about one billion dollars. Um, security is at different layers, starting from the individual user all the way up to the company level. So you can, so that companies can take the security infrastructure and change the policies to what you or you want to do. Yeah. Let's also find out for how the subscription plans work for Azure. Sure. So you, are a simple developer, a developer can just spin up a pay-as-you-go subscription today on Azure. So we give every free, every subscription basically two hundred dollars of free credit. Um, so you can start playing around, and if you want to increase your subscription, uh, there are different ways to do it, either as an enterprise or um, as a with along with our partners as well, uh, called cloud solution providers who are based in Myanmar as well. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system for automating application deployment, scaling, and management. How does it coordinately match and to work with Azure? Yeah, my name is Tetun. Uh, actually, I'm the technology strategist from Microsoft South Asia, uh, South Asia New Market. Actually, I'm reporting to the Asia Pacific. So I cover covering the nine countries, including Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and the other country as well. So uh, Kubernetes is an open source platform. It's used by uh, worldwide, uh, very popular, and so we make it easier. So what what as well do is like we integrate Kubernetes into the as well platform. So so not that time they normally when they implement Kubernetes they need to provision their virtual machine and also they need to they need to manage all those uh, OS inside or operating system inside all those manageability. So but if what as well do is like as well provide uh, like a uh, first party service like so so developer or even customer they don't need to they don't even need to worry about their 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 service failure and as well as uh, uh, maintenance application upgrade. So it's very seamlessly integrated in the cloud. So they just sync a few clicks, they can easily provision in the cloud. General knowledge time. Cloud computing is the on-demand availability of computer system resources, especially data storage and computing power, without direct active management by the user. The term is generally used to describe data centers available to many users over the internet. Thank you guys, hope you enjoyed the report. Reporter David Tanner signing out for now, and you guys have a good day. Right, that's all the reports we have for today. We'll now explore a little more around the world to see if there's anything strange or interesting happening in the world. A British Columbia farm is aiming to break a Guinness World Record by gathering 356 people to participate in the world's largest goat yoga class. Man Farms in Abbotsford said it is aiming to have 356 people wearing red and white stretch alongside the farm's goats at 10 a.m. Saturday in a bid to set a Guinness record. Participants are being asked to pre-register on the website for $25, which includes a strawberry picking session and a pint basket to take home. A hotel finding website is hiring a pool hop whose duties include traveling across the country, researching the most epic hotel pools. Hotels.com said the chosen candidate will be paid $10,000 plus travel and lodging expenses to travel to six of the most epic hotel pools in the United States and document the experience for the website's visitors. Interested candidates are invited to apply on the posting website by writing 100 words on why they would be right for the job, as well as offering a 100-word sample review of their favorite hotel pool. The hotels to be visited by the pool hub are the Four Seasons Huala Lai in Hawaii, Mondrian Los Angeles, SLS Las Vegas, Garden of the Gods Club and Resort in Colorado Springs, the William Vale in New York and the National Hotel in Miami. Sometimes I wonder why is it that we still do 9 to 5 jobs when we have all these cool and interesting and luxurious job offers. <laughs> Whoever gets accepted for the job Congratulations to you. That's all with the news and reports on Myanmar Today. You can leave your comments and messages on our Facebook posts and catch Myanmar Today on radio at these hours, 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m., 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., and from 7.30 to 8 in the evening, Monday to Friday. Thank you for being with us on MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I am Henry Zin. We'll be right back tomorrow at the same time. Have a great day.